Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is David Novak. Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading recently did the I'll Get Around to It Later tag and I have decided to join in on the fun. Uh, this was created by the book blogger quote unquote and it consists of uh, seven prompts pl plus to tag somebody. I will Put the prompts in the description box in case you would like to do it. They are all sort of variations on exactly the same theme, but I thought that I would do it regardless. Um, I realized that I have a slew of other books that I could pull down to fulfill these prompts. Um, and this uh, is kind of a record of, uh, well, if not quite a record of failure, it is a record of uh, ambitions that have not been met. So, up, you see, you see how he is? <laughs> there we go. So, Number one, a classic book you have been meaning to read forever but haven't read yet. And there's uh, several of them. Uh, I'm going to do multiple prompts with these, I guess. Uh, you might say uh, de Tocqueville, or Tocqueville as people say, uh, Democracy in America. I don't know if this is a good translation. It's Oddly, a book that um, Library of America has a, an edition of, even though it is not written by an American author. Uh, this uh, book is so highly referenced that it's a, a wonder that I've never gotten to it, but it is something of a uh, thick one, so that explains that. And I don't know, um, but for everybody constantly making reference to it, I don't know that um, it would be something that I might pick up on my own. However, um, I long ago read a an essay by Theodore Dalrymple in which he talked about that book in conjunction with this one by the Marquis de Costine, I guess, Letters from Russia, and he suggests that there is a very good contrast in these two books. The Custine is obviously a briefer book. And I am also uh, very curious, and possibly even more than his silly little visit to America, I am uh, more curious about this book, uh, The uh, Ancien Regime and the Revolution. I think, I think that is a topic of study more relevant to me. I just saw an underline in here. That's that's horrible. How did that happen? Where did I see it? Well, it's a pretty clean book, but I saw an underline in here. Dag nabbit. Well, I guess I will find out when I get to it. So that is number one. Number two is a book on your shelf that you haven't read yet. So this is kind of you can see a theme going here already. Well, um, when I was a kid, I found one or other of these volumes, Total War. Uh, I was in high school, I think, and I always had designs upon it. I no longer have it, and it must have been one or the other. I just, there does exist a one volume. It was a little mass market, but I'm sure it was not that. I remembered the title. I don't, I don't know. It probably was Western Hemisphere, but uh, it's it's a long time ambition of sorts. Not that I've been thinking about it for a long time, but because it was once in my possession, uh, kind of along the lines of Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago, which I remembered seeing a long time ago. And when I finally read it uh, last year, I think it was, 
I felt a good sense of satisfaction, and uh, I'm not sure how much the Second World War is a topic upon which I wish to uh, study anymore, but um, regardless, I have them, and so that accounts for something. Number three, a book that you recently got uh, that you haven't read yet, and uh, this is a tough one, um, uh, Palestine Hijacked. Uh, there is another book by this author uh, that is supposed to be a, a very important read, and you could not find a copy of it for less than a thousand dollars. Somebody said that this is sort of built upon that earlier book. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, well, there, there's a lot of notes here, but it's, it's about 370 pages, something like that. And I don't, I don't know how much I really need to know the history in that kind of detail, but it, still uh, is a book that um, I will at least consider reading. Number four, a book that you had forever but haven't read yet, and I've mentioned this one a couple times. Today I brought it down. This is The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith, and it's a lovely copy, but it's beginning to show its age. I've probably had it at least least 30 or 40 years, something like that. And I was pleased to note that the original bookmark from Amaranth Books is still there. This was back in the days of my youth when I was working up in Evanston a lot, and this shop opened up, and I was uh, delighted to prowl the, the stacks and came across this. Um, Apparently, I must have paid eight dollars for it. So that's uh, that's you know you 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 would probably uh, not pay any more for it today if you found it on his shelves. I've recently started going back to the shop after uh, decades of hiatus. So um, I'm not sure how much I really want to read this, but uh, it could be interesting, and I think Smith is supposed to be a uh, impeccable prose stylist. I'm, I'm exaggerating there. He's supposed to be a pretty good writer. So, number five, a book a friend recommended that you haven't read yet. This is not um, a personal friend, but uh, I think uh, these two books were recommended to me by viewers of my channel at one time or another, and I just haven't gotten there yet. So there is this one, Morenga by Uwe Tim, and it looks quite interesting. Um, I don't know if that is himself. Could be. Um, translated from the German by Brian Mitchell, uh, more than a story about historical events, Morenga is a chilling portrayal of the loss of humanity, the blatant disregard for human life, and the misuse of power. Do I really need that? Well, I, I am curious. Oh, now, what is this? Hmm, I just noticed that picture. So I think... That, that looks like a historical photograph. I, I really would like to put this on my, on my list for this year. I don't want it to be sitting around forever. And another novel, this one pertaining somewhat to Palestine, I believe, that somebody recommended to me. Um, to me, it doesn't quite look like my kind of thing. I don't really like this cover either because you can't read it too well. I have no idea... Uh, how you say that. I know nothing about it, but somebody mentioned it to me as uh, to being a, um, a book 
relevant to this situation in Palestine that I might uh, prefer to a, a diehard history like the other book. It looks easier to read than that. Um, some of these uh, chapters, I guess, if, if that's are really sort of brief. Uh, curious, I've never seen a book like this. It, it looks very interesting, so I will uh, consider that as well. Number six, a book you're procrastinating on, and that would be Amiable with Big Teeth by Claude McKay. As soon as I heard that this was coming out, I got so excited, bought it brand new um, in the hardback edition, uh, because if you watch my channel regularly, you will know that I am a fan of the poetry of Claude McKay. I just realized we have some Christmas lights over there. Um, but I, I am not a big fan of Claude McKay's novels. I've looked at them. I think I have Banana Bottom and I have another one. I'm not sure. Uh, which it is, Home home to Harlem is that one. And I've looked at them and just not been enthused about them. But because this was quite a publishing event, this, this must be the manuscript as it was discovered. Uh, author of Home to Harlem. Yeah, there you go. So I, I keep procrastinating. And I think before I touch upon that, uh, this might be a, a book that I would rather read. It's a book of essays. And for years, I wished I could read this book. I, I read about it in a, a biography of McKay. Wasn't available anywhere except for an exorbitant price. And then at some point, um, oh, there's James Weldon Johnson. Look at that. There's supposed to be a bunch of photographs in here. Let's see who else we have. Oh, types of Harlem women. Interesting. No, I think it says there's the world's. It's a it's a, a harvest book. Um, and I did come across it eventually at a, a price that was less than exorbitant, uh, still pricey. Uh, so I really think that I should get to it. Um, a. Philip Randolph. The angels acclaim God divine in Harlem. That's a hard one to see, I think. There's so many, so many people together. Um, I love this. Yeah, I really should put this one. Um, Sufi Abdul Hamid and Marcus Aurelius Garvey. Of course, I, I've, I've come across Garvey in the biographies of McKay, and this would be a good time to really hear what McKay had to say. On the opposite, the Harlem welcomes Lij Araya Abebe and Dr. Malaku Bayan, representatives of Emperor Haile Selassie. So that's the, the one at the bottom. Um, you didn't think you were going to get a, a picture show. Hmm, interesting. Here's a Harlem nurse. Ooh, 
Ooh, nightclub scenes. Look at this. Look at that. Now here you, you catch the, uh, the milieu of some of McKay's poems, the, the Harlem dancer, that kind of thing. Um, I can't see what who this this is a photograph of police officer vittling a needy family. So the police officer was giving them some food, I guess. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, here, here's just a street scene where the exclusive of Negro respectability reside. The famous architect Stanford White's row of houses in 139th Street between 7th and 8th Avenue, nicknamed Strivers Row because of its smartness and desirability when Negroes first took over in the early 1920s. Uh, apparently, Harlem is really becoming gentrified now, or uh, it's probably going to uh, lose its character. Uh, I have not hardly spent any time there. If I happen to be in New York City, I stay in Flushing. Ethel Waters and Alelia Walker. Quite, quite lovely photographs. I wish they were glossy. They're just printed on the, the page. Uh, we have a Harlem inventor and then play ball. Ah, what, what a great, what a great selection of photos, huh? Look at that, man. Well. I think I owe it to myself to, oh my God, bull's eye, bird's eye view of Harlem. You probably can't even see that, but what a picture. Uh, what, what wonderful. I'll make sure I've covered everything. Hmm. I'm surprised they don't at least give me a photograph of Claude McKay himself. Oh my. Sculpture by Augusta Savage, evocative of Negro music, commissioned by the New York, New York World's Fair. Look at that. My, my. Mother bathing her child in an apartment without a bath. My, my, this, this would be, uh, and, and I think the, the articles are going to be pretty good. So I'll, I'll put this, I'll put this on my, on my list for early in the year. Um, I, I do owe it to Claude McKay. Hmm. Just marvelous. So. Let's, uh, well, there's the list of illustrations, but let's, let's see what, what the table of contents says. Harlem Vista, the Negro Quarter Grows Up, God in Harlem, Father Divine, 1935 ADFD, The Occultists, The Cultists, Harlem Businessman, The Business of Numbers, The Business of Amusements, Harlem politician, Marcus Aurelius Garvey, and Sufi Abdul Hamid and organized labor. So it looks like a magnificent read. Look at that. So um, the final prompt on this tag is, uh, well, aside from the one to tag some people, the next book on your TBR. And the, the main thing that I want to accomplish before the year is out is Huckleberry Finn. And I, I, I read Tom Sawyer as my last book of last, well, yeah, of last year. So uh, Huckleberry Finn, either it will be my last book of 
this year or next to last because I want to read a book of criticism by Shelley Fisher Fishkin, uh, which I have, was Huck Black. And uh, it seems like it would be nice to try to squeeze those in before the year is out, both of them. So we shall see how that goes. And if this tag seems of interest to you, mainly it's about talking about books that you have not read, um, please consider yourself tagged. Thank you very much for stopping by my channel.